As President said this morning, this storm is incredibly dangerous and life-threatening. Heed warnings from state and local officials. If you're told to shelter in place, please do so, shelter in place. Additionally, we know that disruptions from hurricanes can pose challenges to markets, but the latest projections show that major refineries should not be impacted by Hurricane Ian. As the President said today, oil and gas companies should not use this moment as an excuse to raise gas prices. I also want to speak to the sham referenda that Russia has staged in occupied areas in Ukraine. These referenda were straight from the Kremlin playbook. They were manufactured and manipulated. Ukrainian civilians were forced to cast ballots under the watch of armed guards. We have seen videos and reports of armed officials going door to door, intimidating voters, and stopping Ukrainians on the street and forcing them to vote. These so-called referenda have been an exercise in coercion and disinformation executed by puppet authorities following orders from Russia. Based on our information, every aspect of this referendum process was pre-staged and orchestrated by the Kremlin. Weeks, if not months ago, Russian officials planned to announce these pre-determined pre outcomes. The Russian government instructed security forces to occupy referendum workers as they collected votes, and the Russian government falsified the results to advance the lie that the Ukrainian people want to be part of Russia. But as we all know, to the contrary, the world has seen very, very clearly that Ukrainians do not want to be part of Russia. In reality, the Ukrainian people are continuing to fight for their independence with support from United States and allies across the globe. They have courageously resisted Russia's invasion. The Ukrainian people have defended their territory heroically and at significant cost. In occupied areas of Ukraine, Russian forces have committed war crimes and atrocities, killed thousands of civilians, and subjected thousands more to filtration operations. And it is in these occupied areas that Russia would have us believe against all evidence and also all logic that the Ukrainian people have suddenly chosen to join Russia. But we know the truth. These referenda are illegitimate and frankly outrageous. We expect Russia to use these sham referenda as a false pretext to try to annex Ukrainian territory in flagrant violation of international law and the United Nations Charter. In fact, Russia's actions are transparently fraudulent and have no legal significance whatsoever. We will never recognize these illegal and illegitimate attempts at annexation. Regardless of Russia's claims, this remains Ukrainian territory, and Ukraine has every right to continue to fight for their full sovereignty. In response, we will work with our allies and partners to impose additional economic costs on Russia and individuals and en entities inside and outside of Russia that provide support to this action. We will rally global opposition to Russia's attempts at annexation, including at the United Nations. And we will continue to stand with Ukraine as they defend their territory and sovereignty, as we have been doing for the past several months. And today, the United States is announcing an additional $1.1 billion package of weapons and equipment for Ukraine through the Ukraine Security Assistant Initiative. This includes 18 new high-mobility artillery rocket system and also known as HIMARS, which Ukraine has used so effect effectively on the battlefield. It is also includes hundreds of armored vehicles, radars, and counter drone systems. We will not be deterred from supporting Ukraine. We will continue to stand with the Ukrainian people and provide them with the security assistance they need to defend themselves for as long as it takes. With that,
Go ahead, uh, thanks, Karine. Uh, on the store, can you uh, provide an update on what the president has been doing today? Um, as the store there, there's down in Florida, has been making phone calls, receiving briefings. Who's been briefing him? So he's been receiving regular briefings uh, throughout uh, these last couple of days. Uh, as you know, he met with uh, the FEMA administrator yesterday. He will continue to get uh, briefings as well today. Uh, he will uh, most likely continue to make calls as well. Uh, I don't have anything to read out at this time, but as you heard him speak of, about this this morning at the top of uh, his event, uh, he, uh, he laid out uh, his thoughts. He laid out what the federal government is doing and the, uh, the response that we are providing. We are surging uh, our efforts. We are making sure that we are there for the people uh, of Florida. We will continue to do that. You will hear again directly uh, from this president tomorrow when he visits uh, FEMA. Uh, to get uh, to get an update, but again, this president has been all hands on deck uh, at this moment. He spoke to the governor, as uh, as I just mentioned moments ago. He spoke to uh, uh, three mayors, as we read out to all of you uh, yesterday. And if there are any uh, further calls, we'll be sure to read those out. And with the conversation with Governor DeSantis, is there anything more you can offer in terms of the, uh, the substance of that discussion? Any requests from the governor for additional federal assistance or disaster declarations? So, uh, just to give you uh, a little bit, and we. Kind of laid this out yesterday. They spoke yesterday. Uh, the president wanted to relay that his prayers are with the, the people of Florida and that Florida will have the full force of the federal government. Uh, again, we are committed to continued uh, close coordination between the federal and state government as we respond to this emergency. Yesterday, when the administrator was at this very podium, she mentioned how there were uh, members of her team uh, that was traveling with uh, the governor yesterday. And so that will uh, continue. We will continue to see that partnership and uh, again we will have the full force of the federal uh, government and resources uh, to the people of Florida. And just on the uh, North Stream pipeline, uh, the explosions there, um, is there any update in terms of the formal U.S. government assessment of uh, those apparent explosions plus back of sabotage and is there a uh, uh, assessment of, of culpability there? So we have been in touch with our European partners there uh, about the apparent sabotage uh, of the pipelines. We are supporting European efforts to investigate this as I just kind of laid out. It's still under investigation. Uh, as you all know, these pipelines were pumping gas into Europe, or not, uh, pardon me, are not pumping uh, gas into Europe at this time. Uh, uh, Nord Stream 2 uh, was never operational. And uh, NS1 has been shut down for weeks because of, of how Russia is uh, weaponizing uh, energy. No assessment of that. Business. No assessment uh, as of yet. Uh, the investigation is still underway, and it could take some time. So just letting you all know it, uh, what we expect that it will take some time. Thank you. Just a couple follow-ups on, on what Zika here on some, some specifics. Um, it, now that the storm has made landfall, can you give us a, a better sense of how often the president is going to be briefed? Do you think it's an hourly situation or? So I don't have any specifics on hourly or every 30 minutes or every few hours. Just know that he is uh, very much, very much keeping an eye uh, on what is happening uh, with the storm. Uh, he has been in regular touch uh, with the FEMA administrator. He spoke to her today, uh, and he has been getting uh, – um, I'm sorry, he spoke to her yesterday, as you know. If there is more, if he speaks to her again, we will surely uh, read that out. Uh, but this is something that has been top of mind. Uh, and uh, I was, as I, as, I, as I said with the uh, administrator yesterday, I was in the room uh, with him when he called the three mayors. Uh, and uh, it has come up in every uh, meeting that I have personally had with him. And so, again, this is top of mind. We are going to put the full force of the federal government uh, to, uh, to, to the people of, of Florida. And uh, again, they are in our prayers. And, they, uh, and we, we have been very clear to make sure that the folks in Florida listen to local and state officials at this time. And on the DeSantis call, um, did they just speak about the hurricane? Could you elaborate more on the tone of the conversation given the complex relationship there? Again, there's no politics in this. When we talk about extreme weather, when we talk about what we're seeing right now with a Category 4 hurricane about to uh, any moment now, about to, uh, to hit the coast of Florida, uh, this is about the people of Florida. Uh, this is about two people who, who, uh, who wanted to have a conversation on how, uh, how we can be uh, partners uh, to the governor uh, and uh, and his constituents, and make sure uh, that we are delivering for the people of, of Florida. That is the focus, and that's going to continue to be the focus these next couple of days. One quick final one. Sure. What happened in the hunger event today? The president appeared to look around the room. Uh, 
foreign audience member, a member of Congress who passed away last month, who seemed to indicate she might be in the room. What, so, what happened there? So the president w was, uh, as you all know, you guys were watching uh, today's event, a very important event on uh, food insecurity. The president was naming uh, the congressional champions on this issue and was acknowledging her incredible work. He had, uh, he had already uh, planned to welcome the Congresswoman's family uh, to the White House on Friday. There will be a, a bill signing in her honor this coming Friday. Uh, so, of course, she was on his mind. She was of top of mind uh, for the president. He uh, looks very much looks forward to discussing her remarkable legacy of public service with them when he sees her family this coming Friday. He said, Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? She must not be here. No, I totally understand. I just, I just explained she was on top of mind. Uh, um, you know, this was an, what we were able to witness today and what the president was able to lift up uh, in this, uh, at this conference, at this event, uh, was how her, uh, her focus on um, wanting to uh, uh, deal with, combat food insecurity in America. And this is something that he was lifting up and honoring. And again, he knows that he's going to see her family this coming Friday. There is a bill signing uh, that's going to be remaining. before it's going to take some time uh, to see who to see uh, who is behind this and uh, so there is a investigation underway uh, and uh, I will say that uh, attacks on critical infrastructure of our European and NATO allies is a matter of concern for us and uh, we will continue to be vigilant uh, on this and coordinate with our allies and partners. But again, uh, the investigation, as we understand it, is going to take some time, and it's uh, it's underway. Um, the Energy Secretary said today in an interview with Bloomberg um, that all energy infrastructure operators in the Baltic Sea area, as well as U.S. LNG ships bringing LNG over to the EU, need to be on, quote, high alert, given what we've seen with the pipelines. Has there been a shift in the U.S. security posture in the region because of the allegations of potential sabotage? Uh, don't have anything to share on any shift of security posture in the region. Uh, but look, we take this, uh, you know, we take this very seriously, and this is of concern to us. And so, again, uh, we are going to uh, we're going to to let the investigation happen. Uh, occur. It's going to take some time, and we will be there for our European partners and allies, and uh, and also our NATO allies. You detailed this um, strenuously at the top. This was so transparent and so telegraphed in terms of the referenda and the kind of sham annexation efforts. Why wait until after annexation to take action in terms of imposing costs economically? Is this a legal issue? Is this a making sure people are united? Why wait until it's done when you know it's coming? So that is the posture that we are all taking uh, with our allies and partners. Uh, look, we are, we are, but again, it does not take away from the fact, uh, the, the pure fact that we are prepared to impose swift and severe economic cost on Russia when they move forward with annexation on individual and entities inside and outside of the of Russia that provide support for this action. Uh, and uh, you know, we will continue to stand with the people of Ukraine as they defend their territory. Uh, look. You know, there's, there was a process here. We knew this was coming. This was part of the Kremlin playbook. And, but if they do indeed move forward, uh, and uh, they move forward with the, uh, with the annexation, we will be prepared uh, with our partners and allies. And just one more quick follow-up, because I'm trying to get my head around the response. If the late Congresswoman was top of mind for the President and her family was expected to be here, and that's what he was thinking about, what, why was he looking for? I'm not, I'm not trying to be 
I'm sorry to hear that. No, I mean, and I'm... Between nope. what you were saying and what he said there. And again, I think people can understand. I think the American people out there who, you know, watch the briefing uh, from time to time, maybe at this moment, will understand when someone is at top of mind. Uh, and, uh, and this was such an important, uh, such an important event when we're talking about hunger, when we're talking about food insecurity, when we're talking about these champions, these congressional champions who were in the room, who have worked in a bipartisan way. Uh, we know we don't talk much about bipartisan actions that we see in Congress at this time. And as he was naming folks, he, she was on top of mind and he understands and knew that she was, he was going to see uh, her family on Friday uh, to, for this bill signing. Uh, again, I don't think it's all that unusual. Uh, to have someone top of mind, especially as there's a big event, uh, two big events today and also Friday, uh, that is going to occur. And so he's going to see her family, they're going to honor her, uh, they're going to celebrate her, and he will do a bill signing for this really critical, let's not forget, this critical important issue for millions and millions uh, of Americans across the country. Thanks, Green. Um, uh, back on the Nord Stream pipeline, whoever attacked the pipeline, and it may take a while to, to figure out who it was, would the U.S. consider that to qualify as an attack on a NATO ally worthy of retaliation? So I don't want to get ahead of the investigation. Uh, we have to see. Uh, we have to see who is behind this at this time. I, I understand the question because it is a, a pipeline, uh, and it is uh, going to affect our, certainly our NATO allies. Uh, but um, uh, we want to see where the investigation goes. Uh, and uh, again, the, an attack on critical infrastructure of our European uh, allies and NATO, our European partners and, and NATO allies is a is a matter of concern for us. Uh, but we will we will be there and we will be uh, ready uh, to uh, be ready to react once we have uh, the investigation is completed. Former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev said that Russia has the right to defend itself with nuclear weapons and that NATO would be too scared of a nuclear apocalypse to retaliate. Is he right about that? So let me say this again, and I have said this many times from this podium, uh, so have my colleagues. Uh, there is one person responsible for this war, this war that was started by the Kremlin, this war that was started by Putin, and he is that person. He is responsible for this war. Uh, and he decided that he wanted to uh, attack, brutally attack Ukraine on this unprovoked uh, war. And this is, this is on him. This is on Putin. Putin is the one that could stop this war any time. And look what we're seeing from the people of Russia. They are protesting. They are signing petitions. Many of them do not want to fight this war or die for this war. You know why? Because it is incredibly unpopular. This war is not a popular war for President Putin. And what we're seeing in Ukraine is we're seeing the Ukrainian people bravely, bravely defend their, their freedom, bravely defend their sovereignty. And, you know, when we hear comments like that, we put it back on Putin. Again, this is Putin's war. He can end this. But is Medvedev right that NATO would be too afraid of a nuclear apocalypse to retaliate if Russia were to use nuclear weapons? So I will say this. We take Russia's threat to use nuclear weapons seriously, and we have been saying that the last couple of days in this briefing room. You've heard that uh, from the National Security Advisor as well. You've heard that from the President last week when he was at the UN. But we have not seen any reason to adjust our own nuclear posture. And to be clear, we will not be deterred from supporting Ukraine. Uh, you know, we have been clear that United States will support Ukraine as they defend their country and their democracy against Russian aggression for as long as it takes, as, as have our allies and partners, including the G7. And that's what I can speak to. I can speak to, to your question, I can speak to what our allies are willing to do, and that's continue to defend and to, well, to help Ukraine uh, defend for their sovereignty. And, and then just very quickly, you said yesterday that the U.S. was ready to assist in the investigation if needed. As as far as you know, is the U.S. providing any assistance in the investigation right now, and what kinds of assistance would be most helpful from the U.S.? So I don't have any specifics to lay out uh, for you at this time, uh, but again, as you know, as I've mentioned a few times uh, just now, is that the investigation is underway, 
and uh, this is something that is of concern to us. Thank you. Can just follow up on Nancy quickly. Is it on the table for the U.S. to uh, have a or engage in a nuclear response as retaliation if Russia were to launch a nuclear attack? So we, the president has said said this, and so has um, uh, so has Jake Sullivan. Uh, we have characterized the consequences a number of ways, as you've heard from from him, uh, uh, Jake Sullivan, and others and many others uh, on our team, uh, which is including catastrophic, severe, uh, and decisive. We stand by all of them. Uh, the key point uh, that, that when we say consequence is we will be real and they will be extraordinary. So and we, uh, we have said, but we have said that we have made that very clear. Jake Sullivan said this, I, I believe, on your, sun, on your, uh, on your network, uh, your Sunday show, where he's com he has communicated uh, privately to the Russians, and they understand what the consequences will be. We are not going to lay them out here uh, in public. I want to give you the opportunity to respond to something that was tweeted out today by the Russian government that says, Joe Biden threatened to end Nord Stream. POTUS must give a definitive answer whether the United States acted on its threat on September 25th and 26th. Now, an administration official has called that absurd, but I just want to give you a chance to respond on the podium. So, Look, the president said that NS2 wouldn't become operational, and we would work with Germany on that. And uh, he was right, because Germany took the step in February to freeze it, which was widely reported by all of you. And so that is uh, what the president was talking about at that time. And, and, and but just broadly to the allegation that they're making online, <coughs> somehow the U.S. is responsible. No. Okay. And, um, Karine, our CNBC team is reporting that the president's going to be briefed by his senior economic team later today on the economy, particularly amid concerns about what's happening in Europe and the U.K. specifically. One administration official saying the view continues to be that the United States is in a stronger position than any other country to navigate these global challenges, period. But my question for you, has have concerns about a potential recession increased in the president's mind, given so what we're seeing globally? Here, here's what I will say, and the president talked about this a little bit on, on, on Monday uh, during, his, um, during his event. Uh, so he wants the American people to know, uh, because of Americans' resilience and the economic strategy that we have pursued for the past 19 months, the United States of America is a stronger position uh, than any other country to navigate these global challenges. And that's just period. That's the way we see it. That's the way his economic team sees it. And that's because jobs are up, incomes are up, people are back at work, and American manufacturing is roaring back, up to uh, close to 700,000 uh, thousand new jobs just this past uh, 19 months. And let's not forget the, the legislation wins that you have seen from, this, uh, from, this, from the Democrats in Congress. Uh, when you think about the Inflation Reduction Act, that's just going to help us lower, ta uh, lower prices uh, for the American people. So of course, we are always watching closely, and we will continue to watch closely. As you stated, um, the President will meet with his senior members of his economic team. Uh, and we'll, uh, he met with them on Friday. He'll, we, he will meet with them again uh, to, today to get an update on the global economic developments, as he regularly does. Uh, but we feel like we are in a very strong position to weather uh, these global challenges. So in attendance, I can uh, share that with you. It's going to be the President's econo senior economic team, including Secretaries of Treasury, uh, Commerce, and Energy, the Chair of the Council of Economic Advisors. Ken Thanks, Karine. Um, obviously, the president spoke with the three Tampa Bay, uh, Tampa area mayors mm -hmm. yesterday, but the storm took a turn mm -hmm. uh, to the south uh, last minute. So, has the president spoken with any of the mayors being uh, directly impacted by that? So, I don't have any uh, calls to preview at this time. Once we do, uh, we will preview those calls. Uh, as you know, and we say this all the time, is our team is in regular touch. 
uh, with uh, local officials on the ground, especially at this time. Uh, as we've heard from FEMA and her and uh, the administrator and her team, uh, they are uh, on the ground trying to help in every way uh, possible. And we have put the full force of the federal government uh, when it comes to making sure the people of Florida have the resources they need. I just listed out at the top of my uh, at the top of the briefing on all of the uh, kind of resources, manpower, women power that's on the ground, uh, water, food, and we will continue to to move in that direction, making sure that. Uh, the folks of Florida get what they need. If we have any calls to read out, we will surely uh, share that with all of you. And speaking of uh, federal resources, the governor is asking uh, the de Defense Department to provide additional uh, airlift capacity in anticipation of a massive uh, high water recovery effort. Uh, do you, are you aware of that request? And do you expect it to be granted? So I've heard, I've heard, uh, I've heard some reporting on, on that request. I would uh, have to check with our team uh, to see where we are uh, with that particular request from the governor. Uh, but again, the president has been very clear. Uh, he is uh, going to do everything that he can. His fe his administration, his uh, the federal agencies who are closely involved and aligned uh, with uh, with the with the with Florida government to make sure that we deliver uh, what they need. Uh, this is a critical time. We are praying for uh, the people of Florida, but of, but of course we have uh, they have the full support uh, of the federal government at this time as well. Okay, Steve. I'm, I'm sorry to have to do this, but I'm compelled to ask you to go one more time back to the question about Congresswoman Wolorski. I'm not sure why. Why? Why one more time? Uh, frankly, honestly, I think the memory of the Congresswoman and history requires some clarity here. Um, hmm. Can you explain where the mistake was made? Did the pres was the president confused? Was something written in the teleprompter that he didn't recognize? Can you just help us understand what happened? I mean, you're jumping to a lot of conclusions. Seen, no, but you're. But, find but out I, what happened here. I. No, I hear you, Stephen. I'm. I'm answering the question. That you're jumping to a lot of conclusions. I just answered the question. If I had said, if that had been the case, I would have stated that, right? I would clearly have stated uh, what you just laid out. Uh, what I had said is that she was on top of mind, and that he is going to see her family in just two days' time on Friday to honor her, to honor her work, to honor, uh, to honor um, her legacy, if you will. Uh, I, I just mentioned this, it's gonna be a renaming of a VA clinic in Indiana in her name. And, you know, that is, that is what he was thinking of. He was thinking about her uh, as, he was, as he was naming out and calling out uh, the congressional champions on this issue, on this really critical issue that's going to help millions of Americans. And that is, uh, that is, uh, that is what the president uh, was focused on. Would you be prepared to release the prepared remarks that the president had in teleprompter just so we could understand? Uh, I'm not understanding why, why that would be, would be necessary. We always share uh, the remarks that the president uh, had, um, uh, even, you know, delivered. That's probably gonna be up on the website. Uh, not really sure what that has to do do with anything. I just answered the question about her being on top of mind. I don't think that's any that's unusual. I feel like many of us have gone through uh, that particular uh, you know time where someone is on top of mind and you call them out uh, and you mention them, especially in this this type of context. If you think about how he's going to see the family in two days, if you think about how when he sees them in two days, it's going to be for such an important moment, a signing. Uh, signing a piece of legislation that's going to rename a VA clinic in her uh, in her state that's important uh, if you think about this issue and how important this issue is and he was again calling out the congressional champions uh, for this particular issue let me ask you about something else the president's oh, sure. scheduled tonight yeah. has him attending a political fundraiser mm -hmm. while the storm is hitting the state of Florida is it still his intent to go to the fundraiser, or will he stay here at the White House and monitor them? So um, we don't have anything to change, any changes uh, in his schedule. He has been really steadfast uh, and very clear and has spoken multiple times uh, on what is happening uh, in, in Florida and what we are seeing with Hurricane Ian and other hurricanes right before this, Hurricane Fiona as well, as you all know. Uh, and so his, uh, his administration is on top of this. Uh, he, uh, again, signed the declaration uh, uh, for Florida uh, even before landfall, right? The moment that the governor uh, asked for assistance from us, uh, within hours, 
the president signed that declaration. Uh, you can see how focused he is on it. You can see how important of an issue this is. And uh, sadly, this is not the first extreme uh, weather scenario that we have had to deal with uh, under this administration for the nice last 19 months. And you have seen, and I think you would agree, Stephen, you have seen this administration respond with uh, with efficiency, uh, respond with the full force of resources, and uh, and certainly take this uh, incredibly seriously. The schedule has coverage, press coverage of the fundraiser tonight, as restricted. Uh, is the White House willing to? Uh lift that restriction and see to it that cameras are allowed in to videotape the president's remarks. So as you know, that's a political event, uh, so that's something for the DNC uh, to speak to directly. Karina, North Korea launched two uh, short-term ballistic missiles off its east coast. Uh, does the administration see this as time to Vice President Harris's visit to the DMZ, and are there any additional security precautions being made? So I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Um, so as you know, uh, North Korea has a history of doing these types of, of tests. So it's not, un, un, you know, it's not unusual. It is something that they do uh, uh, historically. North Korea can speak for itself on, on why. That's not something that I'm going to speak to from here. Uh, what I can speak to is our rock-solid commitment to the security of our Japan and South, South Korea allies. And the vice president's trip is a demonstration uh, of that commitment. And just on the permitting bill, you, you put out a statement yesterday after uh, Senator Manchin withdrew the proposal. Um, what is the administration's view of this legislation going forward, and is there any preferred vehicle for this for this bill? Uh, Senator Capito suggested the uh, NDAA might be a possibility later this year. So uh, a couple of things. Um, so first, I want to say that the president wants the government to remain open and uh, is glad that uh, to Congress for making progress on continuing uh, budget resolution. So I want to state that very clearly. Uh, but at the same time, the President believes we must pass the permitting reform bill so that the, the United States can realize the benefits of the historic investment in the Inflation Reduction Act and the bipartisan infrastructure law as well. He supports the permitting reform, as you know, as you, you stated from my, um, from my statement yesterday. The administration will continue to work with Congress and find the best path forward uh, so we can enact this bill. Clearly, the, the Congress is, leads the way on the mechanisms on how uh, bills will move forward. Uh, and so we'll leave that up to leadership. Uh, but again, we will work closely with them. Uh, thank you, Karine. Um, yesterday, President Biden mentioned Rick Scott and Ron Johnson, as well as Kevin McCarthy, warning about those three specifically and what the country would look like if they were in control. I wondered if you could talk about whether this will continue to be a theme for the president, and also who doesn't often mention Mitch McConnell in that context with those, and so it, does he view McConnell as, as differently from, from some of those? No, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't go that far. What I would say is that those are the three that have been very vocal about the GOP agenda. Those are the three that have been very vocal about uh, about putting Medicare and Social Security on the chopping blocks. Uh, you know, we when you think about uh, uh, when they say protect the lives of unborn children, uh, they mean a national ban on abortion that puts doctors and nurses in jail for performing miscarriage management, management or saving the health of the mother. Uh, when they say, and I just mentioned this, when they say save, save and strengthen Social Security and Medicare, they want to slash. Uh, private Social Security and put Medicare on the chopping box every five years. And, and so this is what we have seen from the from these three in particular. I mean, McCarthy uh, was someone that we talked about because he had the GOP agenda, the GOP agenda, which uh, does not have a, a commitment to the American people, which does not have a commitment in making sure that uh, uh, Americans get lower um, medical costs, our seniors get low medical costs, or fight inflation. Matter of fact, the first thing that he wanted to do uh, was get rid of the uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, which would actually hurt Americans. And so that is why we're calling them out. They've been very vocal and very out front about their GOP agenda, which is not about the American people, which is about uh, their own uh, you know, fight for big pharma, uh, their own fight for uh, wealthy special interests. And we are doing the complete opposite. We are fighting for the American people. Uh, the President this week has talked about the importance of competition, uh, tweeting capitalism without competition isn't capitalism, it's exploitation. There's some legislation on the Hill dealing with antitrust and big tech. 
including one co-sponsored by uh, Amy Klobuchar, um, that's waiting for a vote to be scheduled. Does the president have any opinion on that? Is he pushing for a vote? Does he want Chuck Schumer to call for a vote on that before so, the election? So, um, don't have anything to share on that particular uh, piece of legislation. Uh, I know that this is something that uh, the senator uh, has been fighting for for some time and working on uh, for some time, but the president has been very clear uh, about his uh, uh, his concern about the the power larger large uh, social media platforms uh, have over everyday lives, and as long as as has long argued that tech platforms must be held accountable uh, for the harms that they cause, and so the president will continue to to call that out. I, I don't have anything specific on that particular legislation. Well, actually, I just wanted to return to this question of the congresswoman, and I think we all totally get why she's top of mind. You've made that case pretty effectively. Um, well, thank but I think you. the confusing part is why, if she and the family is top of mind, does the president think that she's living and in the room? I don't find that confusing. I mean, I think many people can speak to sometimes when you have someone top of mind, they're a top of mind, exactly that. Uh, and it is also, if you put it into the context, it's not like it happened without it, outside of context, right? It happened at an event. Uh, where we were um, uh, we were calling out the champions, uh, congressional champions in particular of this uh, issue, this important issue uh, when it comes to food insecurity, something that this administration has led on, led uh, on uh, from the beginning of this administration, not just across the country, but, uh, but also globally. You heard him talk about food insecurity last week at the UN and uh, the investments that we have put forward uh, as as the U as as the United States of America and helping and helping deal with that. Look, he was at an event. You all saw. You all watched, which is why you're asking the question, right? Where he was calling out again uh, congressional leaders, uh, a bipartisan uh, leadership that we have seen on this particular issue, and uh, again, he's going to see her family in just two days. And uh, she was on top of mind. I mean, I don't. That is, <laughs> I mean, that is uh, that is not an unusual uh, unusual scenario there. Green, I have John Lennon okay. top of mind just about every day, but I'm not looking around for him anywhere. When you sign a bill for John Lennon, Lennon as president, then we can have this conversation. Well, okay, go ahead. 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 Go
engage in, in diplomacy as it relates to, uh, uh, to the vice president's trip. Uh, so as, as, as you all know, on Thursday, which is tomorrow as part of her trip uh, to the Republic of, of, of Korea, ROK, the vice president will visit uh, the DMZ. Nearly 70 years since the Cor Korean armistice, uh, the visit will underscore the strength of the U.S. ROK alliance and the United States commitment to stand beside the ROK in the face of any threats posed by the Demo Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The vice president will tour sites at the DMZ, meet the service members, and receive an operational briefing from U.S. commanders. The vice president will ref reflect on the shared sacrifice of tens of thousands of American and Korean soldiers who fought and died together and will reaffirm the U.S. commitment to the ROK's defense in ironclad. As you just could tell, that, that, that travel, that trip is going to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, uh, can you address Democratic Representative Henry Cuellar's comments on Fox about the administration needing to do more on the border? He's, you know, obviously been critical of the administration in the past, but is the White House ignoring the congressman as he appears to be contending? So I've not seen uh, those comments. Uh, what I can say and what we have said many times uh, from here, uh, every individual encountered at, at the border is either expelled under Title 42 or placed in removal proceedings. That remain, remains uh, to, to be true. Uh, we, we are working to expedite the asylum process timing and have brought it down from years to months for many recent encounters. Of course, we could expedite the process, uh, processing time even further, and you've heard me say this many times, if congressional Republicans would quit blocking our actions and start supporting the comprehensive immigration reform proposal uh, that the president, the president proposed on uh, day one. And, you know, we have, we inherited a decimated, a gutted uh, uh, immigration system. And the president took this so seriously uh, that on day one, again, he put forth a comprehensive uh, plan. So uh, we, would, we, would, uh, we would look forward to having congressional Republicans join us in, in dealing with this issue. On, on the hurricane, uh, the president had some strong words for oil and gas executives. Um, I wanted to ask, is he, is the White House following up individually with those uh, executives uh, to speak directly about uh, these kind of thir uh, concerns? Any, any plans of bringing them in, for example? So I don't have any actions here to preview for you at this time, but, um, you know, as, uh, as I've noted, wholesale gas prices have declined about three times as much as retail gas prices over the last month. And in, in addition, uh, oil and gas companies are making record profits and, and need to pass these savings on the consumers at the gas pump uh, now. So the president is making that very clear. We are making that uh, very clear, and uh, and uh, we'll leave it as that. If there's more to preview, we certainly will share that. Uh, yeah, thanks very much. Just back to Florida for a second. Um, can you uh, talk a little bit about how long the conversation was between the president and the governor? Um, and also, did they touch on any other topics, like the governor sending the migrants to Martha's Vineyard? So uh, the call was just focused on the hurricane, uh, that, uh, the hurricane response. Uh, there was no other topic that was discussed uh, on the call. I don't have a time uh, line of how or a timing of how long the call was. I think the important thing is that the call happened, uh, that the president was able to connect with the governor. Uh, they both agreed uh, that uh, that they would uh, stay in, they would, uh, uh, that uh, the president would be there uh, to have the full force of the uh, federal government behind, uh, behind, uh, behind Florida and for the, uh, the people of Florida. And he, uh, they are, they were committed uh, to continued close coordination between the federal, federal and state government and so uh, as we respond to the emergency that was the commitment that the may they made that was a conversation that was had uh, again the FEMA administrator has spoken to uh, the governor she spoke to governor uh, many days ago uh, she said here and I'll just reiterate as I just said moments ago uh, her team has been on the ground uh, with the governor and his team and uh, we will continue to work in close coordination 
Thank you so much. Um, on the global uh, economy, the strong dollar has an impact uh, beyond the borders of the United States, mm -hmm. obviously on many countries. So is this something the administration is discussing with allies and, and, and partners? And how coordinated is the economic response? Because we get warnings about you know global recession almost every day. So the US government, uh, including the Department of Treasury, uh, are always in touch with our allies and partners, including the UK on the global economy. Uh, don't have anything further to share on that piece. Uh, but again, this is, uh, as I mentioned, when it comes to the global economy, this is something that uh, we are clearly watching very closely. Uh, and uh, But we feel, uh, as I stated uh, a second ago, uh, that we are in, in a strong position. The U.S. economy is in a strong position uh, to deal with the global challenges ahead. Good. Um, you're in the back there. Uh, thank you. I wanted to ask about something you said yesterday, but really quickly. Um, Ambassador Rahm Emanuel has been in touch with the family of Navy Lieutenant Ridge Alconis, and a number of U.S. Senators have sent a letter to the Japanese government asking them to revisit his case. Um, I know the President has a lot on his plate, but is this something that he's been briefed about? Uh, that one I would have to just check with his team, um, since they're, like, to your point, there's just so much going on, so let me just check with his team on that particular question. My uh, second question is, um, during his second press conference, the President said of the midterm elections, I'm not going to say it's going to be legit. Uh, his subsequent preferred voter reforms, uh, those did not pass Congress. And then yesterday, you said, we are confident in the integrity of our elections here. My question is, what gives Biden confidence six weeks out from those elections that he didn't seem to have at the beginning of the year? So, can can you do me a favor? Can I just go back and see his answer there? Because I want to see what context he was answering that question and how it was asked. Uh, so in order to give you a fulsome answer, I actually need to do that, just to be fair to you and to be fair certainly to uh, the president as I represent him up here. Uh, so let me let me do that, and then I can get back to you on that particular okay, question. Just to try one more time, um, does the president believe that and his reference to the late Representative Jackie Walorski, who you have said uh, from the podium numerous times, he respects the work that she has done. He'll be meeting with her family um, to honor her work. Does he believe that he handled that reference appropriately? Or is this something that he would like to get back? You get, uh, what, like to get back what? He said, where is Jackie? Look. I know this is a, a question that many of you have had. I've answered it multiple times uh, already in this room. Uh, and my answer is certainly not going to change. Uh, all of you may have views on, on how I'm answering it, but I am answering the question uh, to the way that uh, he saw it uh, and the way that uh, we see it. Uh, we have to remember as, as well is that, uh, you know, this was an important event today. This was an event about food security. This was an event about how we're going to take the steps to get to, to eradicate hunger by 2030. And that is something that the president takes very personally. That is something that the, we would be doing this event that has not happened since President Nixon, right? That was 50 years ago that an event like this occurred at the White House. So clearly this is something that is important. Uh, clearly, this is something that he uh, really honors both Republican and Democratic uh, congressional champions uh, when it comes to this issue. Again, she was at the top of mind. Uh, he is going to be uh, seeing her family in two days to honor her, uh, to honor the work that she has done. And, um, and uh, you know, this was a remarkable legacy that she had, and we should be honoring that. I'm going to go to the back. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, early in the back. Uh, but Governor Gavin Newsom has been successful in keeping universal uh, school lunch, the program in California. They're seeing lots of great results with that. Mm -hmm. And I know that's an aspect of what they're talking about today and that the administration, the Biden administration, does support universal um, school nutrition. However, the program was scrapped. And I'm wondering if there's any way to circumvent Congress in keeping a free school lunch. So the American Rescue Plan is what you're talking about, provided 
provided states uh, to have those types of um, uh, those types of programs in schools. Uh, and again, this was a this when you think about the American Rescue Plan and all that it afforded, how it turned the economy back on, how it allowed states uh, to really give a little bit of breathing room to their own constituencies, whether it is at schools, uh, whether it is helping small businesses get back on their feet, uh, and let's not forget opening schools uh, as well. This is something that Democrats in Congress, including the president, uh, had had uh, had a zero focus on, like zeroed in on that focus on. Uh, and it was uh, it was it was a, a bold action that the president believed uh, needed to be uh, taken. And let's not forget, it also helped to uh, uh, really deal with uh, child poverty uh, in in communities that have uh, that have really been hurt uh, by uh, by this. And so, uh, look, don't have anything new to share on on um, on that piece of that question that you just asked me. But we have. I think it's also important to highlight how important the American American Rescue Plan, how much it changed but lives. Is, is there any potential that universal school lunch will come back within uh, what, this next couple of well, years? Again, uh, don't have anything to preview, but I also want to list out how important that American Rescue Plan was. And it gave states the funding to do just that, to do what you are uh, laying out and how critical that was at the time during a pan a beginning of a pandemic or in, you know, at the, in, even in the middle of a pandemic because it lasted for some time uh, to deal with uh, that issue. Don't have anything else to preview. I don't have anything else to share about what Congress is doing on that particular issue. But again, that is why this food insecurity uh, issue that we dealt with today, this conference that we haven't seen in 50 years, and what the work of the agencies have been doing just for the past several months uh, to deal with food insecurity, the fact that we are trying to end hunger uh, by 2030, and not just us, in a bipartisan way with Congress, with this president. And so that is our work ahead to see if we can get to that goal, and we put out a fact, fact sheet. We listed out the ways that we're going to get there. Yeah, um, oh, right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you on Friday. Thanks, everybody.